right, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm getting hangry over here. We running, Trap? We rolling. All right, we rolling. Okay, welcome to the Ghetto Bird Show, where you're going to hear all the craziness. You never know who might be on it. You never know anything. Yeah. So I want to say I'm with my legendary host. He'll say he's not a legend, but he's a legend to me. That man is inspirational. (laughs) Mr. Rob Cahill. (laughs) And I said his name. That's a hundred (laughs) dollars. You said it right. That was the key point. Yeah. So, Mr. Kareem Campbell, thank you so much for uh, you know calling up a couple of your friends because today the the set is switched up, and that's because we have the first guest of the Ghetto Bird Show. Kid is on. And uh, now that he learned how to DM, I know a number of you guys have hit back. And oh so we yeah. Have some cool guys lined up for the future, but today it was someone you actually texted and was quick to respond, and that was really cool that he was yeah. willing to come on. I thought it was amazing. It was amazing. So it's really cool that we get to start off a skateboarding podcast with one of the the ultimate skateboarders that ever walked the planet. Yeah. So everyone that didn't respond, just think about this name I'm about to say. Right. So I don't know why you ain't respond, but we got the <laughs> Mr. Legendary, yeah, Tony, Tony Hawk. Hawk himself. Tony Hawk's on Man, the show today, guys. It's so insane right now. So it's like I'm go. so I'm I'm fanned out right now. So I I, I guess we're gonna zoom him up here in a second, yep. right? All right, let's plug him right, up. Here we go. Let's zoom him in. Let's zoom in, Mr. Where Tony at, Hawk. Man? I want to thank you for this opportunity. I want to thank you for being you because you yeah. have definitely helped to pave the way for 99.9% of us. Hey, man, I appreciate it, Kareem. I've, I've always had huge respect for you as well. I think you've done so much for raising the profile of skateboarding, especially in the black community. And mm. um, I'm so honored that you're, you're part of our game series and legacy. I thank you very much. It's funny because it's like we have so many mutual friends and so many people in the passing like that just know of each other. Because the first thing is like, oh, he skateboard. It's like, well, I know Tony, you know, and I know this. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, I follow Tony. Mm-hmm. I, I always say, I, no, I'm on Tony House video game. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> I'm the black character. I'm like, I was in. So it's like, it's like I'm easy to be spotted because, I, you know, I got the fame from you. Oh, man. I, I, I've so, I hear so many times like that people who played the game they saw your character and that changed everything for them you know just in terms of perception and um i've I've talked to a few people about it where they they say you know you we used to skate but we got made fun of and they said it was white boy sport and then kareem's character was in your game and no one talks shit anymore. That's pretty cool. I mean, I, you know, I, that, that is something that people just actively tell me. I'm not, it's like not some story I'm trying to chase for my own. Oh, no, I, no, get, I, mean, I get it too. Cause they'll be like, yeah. they'll tell me the same weird. They'll be like, oh yeah. Oh, you were the black guy. Oh, okay. So, but I do have one question just for the two of y'all. How did you go about picking that squad, the original squad for Tony Hawk one and oh, two? Yeah, and how did this come about between you, you guys? Oh yeah, well that was that was a, a lot of fun choosing that crew because it does represent so much of skateboarding, and I wanted to represent all facets, um, whether it be origin or even you know whatever whatever it is. Like I wanted to represent all everything, and and I feel like skateboarding is more inclusive than ever, and our game should represent that. Um, but mm-hmm. but what I'm also extremely proud of is that the original roster are still mm-hmm. out there skating still killing it still mm-hmm. representing skateboarding well and and so much that we ended up having everyone scanned at their current age because cool. i wanted to celebrate that you know what i mean what sport could you ever say that about right. the yep. 20 years after the first time you saw the people they're all still doing the exact same thing i didn't right. want us to live in some time capsule like right. we're still here let's let's celebrate that and I'm this is this is what you get. I'm 52 right. and I'm still skating. So wow. put me in the game, put my Man. pads on and right down circle. I'll do a 900. A little <laughs> bit of fountain of youth and skateboarding because both you guys look practically the same. And it's just yeah, amazing to see Andrew 52. Reynolds, too. You know, yeah. I mean, it's so crazy. It's like, I don't know if quarantine just changed everybody, but it's like I know a lot of people <laughs> are doing things, but it's like really everybody's coming out. They shells. They're really just out there giving it. Yeah. And it's, it's so how do you feel about the quarantine and skateboarding right now? It, the, the strangest part about all this, I mean, and I know people are, are struggling and I know, you know, it's trying to get work and being displaced and, and everything has just been one of the hardest things for sure. 
And the strangest part about all of it in terms of having a skateboard company is that skateboard sales are through Our the- industry is booming. <laughs> it's because it, it, so many people want to try it. Yeah. They're stuck wherever they are. And they're like, well, I always want to skate. Let's try skating. And <laughs> it's been crazy. Like it, that's, we, we've been, I've been trying to bring back birdhouse, you know, just in terms of sales and, and success for the last 10 years. Like I, I bought birdhouse from my partner um, a little over 10 years ago mm. and have been trying to do everything I can. I got a new team. We won King of the road three times. Mm -hmm. We did the yeah, video man. and it took quarantine to bring it back. Mm. I mean, I, you know, actually, crazy. I think, I think birdhouse is always doing good. good. I understand the, the perception is that birdhouse has always done well. It, it really hasn't in terms of numbers. Um, mm. um, I just, I keep it afloat with, with other opportunities and licensing and things mm -hmm. like that you know just doing random stuff just to keep it out there because it's it's really it's still my baby like that's yeah. the first company i ever started and and i mm -hmm. i love the team is like my family so i wanted to survive mm -hmm. but um but it has been crazy that that I mean, we were sold out you know yeah. because yeah. of everyone stuck in where they are and um i'm stoked that i just i'm just stoked that it means more people have discovered skateboarding really that's mm -hmm. to me what yeah. it's about and i want to say definitely like when you just said it, it actually touched me because it was like, I used to take my action checks and pay my menace guys at the beginning. So I like, yeah, I like, that's hey, exactly. I it. haven't got, I haven't got a check in five or six years. Like I would, mm -hmm. they'd be like, oh yeah, whatever. I'm like, right. <laughs> you know, I'm maneuvering, but I, I believe it. I, there's a, there's a series, we call it the skate park series. Uh -huh. There's a series of uh, skateboards we do that are more, um, like, box store, you know, Walmart, Target level skateboards. They're still, uh, they're still good skateboards, especially for beginners. Mm -hmm. They're not like yeah. the junky ones that the wheels don't roll and whatnot, but that money I used, I had been using to pay the birdhouse riders. You know, that, that kind of thing is, like I said, it's not something that I'm trying to promote. It's just more, that was the reality of it. The thing I'm proud of is that when we got approached to do skateboards on that level, you know, it's tricky. You get like, there's, there's a lot of hate out there. There's a lot of, uh, like you said, there's a lot of scrutiny and you're calling you a sellout. But what I managed to do was take those junky boards that they sold at Walmart and Make them refine better. them so that they're a little bit more expensive, but they work. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And we had to fight for that. Like they didn't mm -hmm. want to, they didn't want to add a, a, this is no lie. They didn't want to add a, an extra 50 cent cost to each board so that the mm. bearings would roll. Whoa. And I was like, See? well, that's what it's going to take. If you want me in there, that's what it's going to take. And we fought for mm. that. So instead of say a 20 or $25 complete, we have a $40 complete, but it worked. It's actually right. a good, it's actually a good boy. I mean, yeah. a lot of, we, you got to think about it. Like, I know for me, I started off, I think my first board was like a Johnny Cop. Like, so I, I right. know that like, whatever we're given, if you have that passion, you're going to learn. You know what I mean? So at the same yeah. time. Well, and, unless you're buying, unless you're buying <laughs> this super piece of <laughs> shit. You it's got to roll though, Ring. It's got to roll. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm going to <laughs> I'm gonna say, coming from the hood, yeah, we used to take old bearings, right. put a little bit of gasoline in them. Uh -huh. Try to get as much of the solution where it'd spin, it'd be like, <laughs> but it'd go. <laughs> like, so I, I mean, I used to have to maneuver certain different things sometimes, you know? We appreciate you going the extra mile to make sure your boards rolled, even if they were in a big box department store. Uh, you know, it, it, all, it all seems like it, it's simple, but when you're dealing with those kind of right. corporations and retailers, they don't, they don't like to they don't like pushback, <laughs> you know, their, their, their attitude is you're lucky to be here. So you better play by our rules. But at the same right. time, I always felt like, why don't we share this with others? Because right. this is the coolest, like this, is this, this changed my life. I mean, skateboarding made me feel, finally feel good about myself. Uh, I found a crowd that I identified with and I didn't fit in. Like I didn't fit into team sports. And so I knew what it did for me personally, and I wasn't trying to keep that exclusive. And so all through the years, I was like, if there's an opportunity to promote skateboarding on a bigger level, I'm all in. Wow. How, how was it when the days when flipping everybody, when you guys just all teamed up? I just had, you know, if I had to ask, because I was like, Flip was such an insane company, and you guys, like you guys had your synergy and everything. It was just like, how was it? 
It was crazy. I mean, we, you know, our building was just blowing up. Uh, so when we started Birdhouse, me and Per Wielander, we started a distribution company as well. So we, we thought we, we want to do Birdhouse. We also want to be able to work with other brands. So we mm-hmm. called that Blitz Distribution. Mm-hmm. And then we started uh, hookups for Jeremy because he just wanted to do more Japanese stuff so much that it was just like just do your own thing and <laughs> yeah then, uh, and, it, and it was doing good too though <laughs> yeah yeah for sure and then uh death box in the uk wanted to rebrand themselves and move to the us as flip and uh that was pair pair was like hey man i think we should get on this and i was like yeah they're, those guys rip let's do it <laughs> i remember um when they first started they called me because tom penny was was coming over to move here and they the the other guys uh jeremy and ian were not moving yet and they're like you gotta keep an eye on tom mm-hmm. so what do you mean <laughs> exactly someone if someone sees him skate they're gonna steal him right Gary, so for sure you gotta like you gotta keep him under wraps and i was like i i have my own <sighs> kid i can't and i i don't live in orange county like i'm sorry i can't be responsible for like keeping your your rider bottled up <laughs> but it worked out. I would say another question. How does it feel to have an amazing son that's killing it in the industry that you helped to bring up? Like if I was to say as a parent. It's so fun to see him not just succeed on his own, but really choose his own path. Because, you know, he, he obviously had a, this, this shadow that he had to live under where people would judge him just for that where they right. think mm-hmm. that everything came easy for him or somehow he bought his way into skating. I don't know. You know, there's just so many yeah. people haters. make so many assumptions. And then mm-hmm. he just was like, I'm doing my own thing. Like I'm doing it this way. And I, a perfect example is, you know, you know, that app cameo yeah, where you can make cameos. They're like, I'm on mm-hmm. cameo. Right. And uh, I was telling him about it. And they've actually hit me up. They're like, hey, do you think Riley would want to do that? And and I just know Riley. Like, he, he won't want to do it. But I did ask him. And he's like, I don't like really talking to, like, the camera. You know what I mean? And and, yeah. and I have to respect that. And I think mm-hmm. it's cool that that he can choose to do that and still – be successful. Seth, like, yeah. So that's the thing yeah. is he, he watched me, he watched me growing up doing interviews endlessly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, including him, he's like, Oh, this is my son Riley, and he skates. And that just turned him off from it. You know, he he he's just like, all right, I'm gonna do my own thing. And then and then he got huge respect from the skate industry because obviously he's got the skills. And and then, but also he he can be successful and get sponsors and not have to do the interviews. So I think it's cool. <laughs> You remember Neftali? You know, he just got his doctor. Yep. Me and him used to talk about you a lot. You have made so many different waves to where it's like, it made me think like, wow, like how can I get to that? You know, and Neftali was more of an educated person and knowing the knowledge of how to do it. And he was just like, nah, brother, you're going to get there. You're going to get there. But just keep, keep following his waves. <laughs> he's, he's, he is the <laughs> one, you know what I mean? Oh man, I can't. I mean, I'm so. We're, so he's on our board of directors now mm. for the skate park okay. project, which was right. formerly known as Tony Hawk Foundation. And his his research is so invaluable. You know, I mean, it, like I can't even I can't begin to explain how thankful we are with someone with his insight to be on the board of directors. He and and uh, his first board meeting he had with us was huh. ten minutes after he got his doctorate. Oh wow. oh wow! Wow! Oh, yeah. He went to his dissertation and then got on a right. Zoom call with us with a glass of champagne in his hand. It was awesome. Man, Doctor Neftali, Neftali Williams, Neftali man. brother, the Doctor Neftali. Always. Yeah. always. A lot of kids wouldn't be as good as they are now because they wouldn't have facilities if it wasn't for the foundation. So you got to pat yourself on the back too, sir. You know. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's that's the. I mean, it's the work I'm most proud of for sure. And just so you know, this character right here is on the board of our own yeah, Four Down Project. Four Down Project, but it's me, Mike Crum, and Rob. But it's like, we're really following your footsteps. So I want to thank you, too. Oh, yeah, of course. I've seen what you guys are doing. It's great. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that there was a whole, a big charity until recently, actually. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. We, we're just trying to, you know, give back. You know, Rob's actually, you know, he's one of the main spearheads of it to yeah. pretty much handle the corporate side. I just stay on as a, you know what I mean? I just show my face. I try to be. <laughs> That's it. Hey, that is, it's welcome to the club. I know what it's like. Shaking hands and kissing some babies. But what I love right now is, for instance, Tony, my favorite thing to see, my wife too, and a lot of her, a lot of her friends who don't care about skating, they love to see you and Sky. They love to oh, see yeah. you and Sky skating all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's just amazing. What a gift to skateboarding that she is. But but Leticia and uh, the other little one in Brazil that Stevie. wears the tutus and stuff. Uh, Raisa. These girls these days, they're good, good. No, oh, yeah, they hard flipping. They're, they're doing. I'm sitting there. Mick twisting. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah Sky's yeah, yeah. Mick twisting. And the fact that she fought through those falls. Like, I watched her slam on McTwist. I mean, I'm talking about, like, on her stomach, you know, laid out, like, sliding across the flat and then getting up and walking up the stairs and doing it. And, it, and that's, not, that's not because this is not because me or her dad or someone is telling her she has to do it. We're, if anything, we're discouraging her from it. Yeah, because I know if it was my daughter, I'm about to go pick you up. We about to... Uh... <laughs> Take off all of this equipment you got. We're going about to stop. Yeah, it's a fine line, man. It's hard. It's hard when she's so young and that determined. Um, yeah. But uh, I see it, you know, and it's, it's really cool to see. And in a different way, I see the same thing with Lizzie Armanto. Mm. She wants to do something. Like, she wanted to do the loop. And when she first got there, she was trying it. I was like, I don't, you know, I don't think that's going to work out. Because she was, yeah. she didn't have the approach. She didn't really have the the confidence and then there were a bunch of other people trying it and she's like well when they're all done can i come back and try it mm. and i said yeah sure so everyone did their you know the people who could do it did it everyone else left and i'll never forget watching lizzie come out with her pads on like the only person there so like, can i try it now <laughs> i said yeah and then like a half hour later she was doing it uh, that's me. such that's, a yeah, I mean, that's but that in insane. particular is such a gnarly thing to try because like uh, how do you even bail you're going to go upside down like that's a full commit situation right no there's there's only there's only two outcomes of the loop one is a make and the other is usually tragedy okay <laughs> i will ask i will ask i have to this is on my list what trick was harder the loop or the 900 because i said i've you know i've been around a few times when you're doing the 900 i think we were up in sacramento a long time ago when we were doing a oh yeah we for that contest that was like yeah no i didn't 900 for sure i tried it for you know i tried it for 10 years i mean i i thought about it for more but i but i actively tried it for 10 years of my life off and on and uh the loop was like we had it built we had one built I went around it, but didn't really make the exit. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then I had it built two years later again and made it. So like that wasn't a, you know what I mean? That wasn't an active pursuit like, oh, like the 900 okay. was. So that's the, that's the thing about the loop. Like you, you have it dialed and then you, one wrong move and you end up with a broken thumb, a broken pelvis, <laughs> fractured skull. I remember the first time I saw it, like, you know, when Ouch. we call ourselves trying it was at, um, Florida. And after Tampa. that, I didn't really want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, I'll, I don't even want to see it. No more. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was, yeah, I've kind of I've kind of put mine to I, I'm putting it to pasture for the most part. Like I'm, I, it's all boxed up uh, <laughs> and it's in the back of my warehouse now. And I don't really have any incentive to bring it out again. Mm. The last time we brought it out, um, well, Felipe Nunez did it. Mm -hmm. um oh, okay. you know the guy with no legs uh, yeah. and then wow. right after him jimmy wilkins fractured his pelvis just Fractured's, like i did so yeah i heard oh about that God. one so i'm gonna put that to rest but uh yeah i guess to answer your question for sure it was it was doing 900s and um you know like i learned 720s in 1985 and it's like what's mm. next 900 and it took it took it took 14 years to figure out that extra half spin it sucks. Yeah, you, you know, but you Tony, just, uh, mm. but really, I mean, being at the top, both of you guys have been at the top. And, you know, they say, for instance, uh, the crown hangs heavy. You know, it's, oh, it's yeah. lonely at the top. And you guys, it's, it's a thing that we like to do, especially in our culture, but it's human nature. We lift people up and then we kind of hate them. We love to see them fall. Bring down. You've yeah. seen a couple rise and fall of skateboarding as an industry, but individually, you both have felt the ups and downs of life. Yeah. And I think it's probably made you 
Well, I think it just increases the depth of character of anyone, but in particular, you guys are probably a lot more human now than you were when you were just on top. Being on top, I just see myself as being myself, yeah. but I am definitely grateful for all the acknowledgement and everything else because I still know there's so much, so much more, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm kind of like one of those nerds, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I venture off where I'm still dealing with skateboarding, but like I do telecom. I'm like... People are like, why are you doing that? <laughs> like, I'm like, I like it. I wanted to be an engineer when I was young. Look at my, my school book, Scientist Engineer. I've always been intrigued in it, you know? So it's like, and it's just pretty much anything. I just started learning how to sew, you know? So it's like, I just love anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it is also the, your experience and, and your upbringing will, especially if you do have some kind of challenges, uh, whether it be economics or, you know, not fitting in, that gives you empathy when you have success. I feel like having been through that childhood that was, you know, I'm not going to say like that it woe is me, like I had the worst childhood, but definitely had some challenges along the way. And then having the success as a skater right after that, like mm. in my teens where we thought we were invincible. Like we were the bones brigade. It was crazy. Mm, and yeah. then everything fell off the cliff right after that. And then, then the nineties hit. And so having those two ups and downs um, made me appreciate it that much more when it came back around again. I mean, you know, you, you were a skater of the early nineties and you knew how the struggle was like, it was impossible. Yeah. No, I mean, I remember even when it went through the, the bird craziness and then I remember like, which is weird, like, you know, I could talk about it, like, the quartermaster day. You know, that's when I first was coming up. And, like, see you and, you know, being introduced, you and Ray Barbie through Todd Hastings and all that. Like, I was so fanned out, you know what I mean? Even though I came from the Venice Wild area, but it was like, you guys are who I went to Tower Records and rented VCR tape and was like, this is who I want to be. This is what I love. Like, I know I hit you up on social media about this, but... When we went to that Sacramento contest and there was that, whatever, they call it a street chorus, but we know what, you know, the it was just long ramps. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you're like, I'll give a hundred bucks. Anyone to drop in on that <laughs> big Burt wall. And I was like, fuck it, I'm in. Like, as soon as you said it, I was like, I mean, I didn't even think about dropping in on it. And then the hardest part about it was getting up it because there was no, there was no backside to it or no deck on. It was just more like I had to pump my way up and climb up Grime it, and up then the a, deck yeah, was like this wide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. But I'll never forget. I'll never forget dropping in, coming over the pyramid, and and you like you go out to <laughs> high five me, but instead of high five, you had a hundred dollar bill in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I love I, that. Yeah, I swear. It's like, so what did you have to do to get your money back? Did you challenge him? Did you bet him back on anything? No, I was, oh, no, I was, I I was so no, psyched I on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so psyched. Like, that's funny. It's like I woke up Ray Barbie at 3 a.m. to play a game of skate. Like, <laughs> that was awesome. It was like that. What those were just so they were so formative those years because yeah. we were just this little bubble of skating. And, you know, like all of skating was there that day, Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And what was yep. it? Maybe a hundred of us, 150, something like that. <laughs> the whole entire yeah. industry was there. No, we were. Of, yeah. It was so deep. It was so crazy. And we did like the yeah. bands ad and all of that. Like everyone mm -hmm. put their shoes out. I remember that. Mm -hmm. I think somebody stole cap, won a cap shoe. It was, it was pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will definitely say, you know, the first time I ever actually laid eyes on you was uh, Gleaming the Cube. If I was to say in Westwood when they did the premiere. Oh, you came to the premiere? Yeah. I, I was I was just starting to skate. Oh, that's awesome. That was the first day when I saw you guys. And it was so funny because how they rushed you guys all in from the, the backside of it. And I was just like, oh, yeah, that's, that's the life. That was the life. Yeah. Yeah. Like as, as if we were going to any other movie premieres. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we were stoked that we got to do that. But but that wasn't like our lifestyle going forward or, or in in any other context. Who is somebody that you've ever, like, just came across in your time that you just fanned out? You know, from music, anything. I got to meet Obama, and that was huge. Skate in the White House. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, yes. I, I skated in the White House, and then I got invited there for a Father's Day event that was uh, basically a bunch of 
known, you know, celebrities, um, sports stars, TV hosts and stuff that, that were known to be fathers. And the whole thing was trying to bring awareness to being present as a father, like really just uh, taking responsibility and being in your kids' lives. And, and we were trying to spread mm. that message. Wow. And so I showed up with my skateboard because why not? I'm a skater, right? And then yeah. I uh, found myself in a hallway kind of alone. And I was just like, woo, went skating down the hallway, handed my phone to one of the other. Uh, there was a couple basketball players there. And then he shot the photo. And then uh, we were in this room. And then Obama walked in. And uh, first thing he said to me was, hey, man, I'm really sorry. We don't have a ramp here for you. <laughs> I was oh, hyped. Wow, that, <laughs> I was yeah. hyped. And my last question would be like, if you can give someone like myself any encouragement or any kind of understanding or anything. Advice. Advice is definitely number one key. What would you, you know what I mean, tell me in my day and age and trying to be like you? Ah, well, I, I don't think you need help from me, but um, <laughs> I think uh, these days just really pick the, cha- pick the things that you want to do that – steam like fun challenges not because they're going to be the most financially rewarding Mm. because we know what it takes to be happy we got to Mm. we got to do what we love for a living you Mm. know what i mean and then to Mm -hmm. to move forward in life and to choose something that you're not going to enjoy is just so pointless Mm -hmm. and so it's like the things that i choose to do now especially with the with the, the very few opportunities that come with, you know, in these strange times, it's like, Hey, that, that sounds like it'd be fun. Like that sounds like a cool mm-hmm. challenge and we could still promote skateboarding, doing it or whatever it is. And I think that it's just more like, we don't have time to, to work <laughs> so hard for, and, and not enjoy it. And money is not the key. It's like, that's it. And I so can... even when I tell kids, when I tell kids, especially like what, what, you know, they have all these dreams and high hopes and, and they want to be super successful. And I was like, dude, just mm-hmm. do what you like doing mm-hmm. and you will it enjoy will going to work every day. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, That's like, and, and, and the money is just incidental to getting to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We never, I never, I never knew there was money in skateboarding when I first started. So there, was so, the, yeah, there wasn't money I've, in it when you first started. <laughs> yeah. So, so I've always, everyone say, oh, you just blow money. Like, yeah, I have shared, I have blown money. I like to do it. But at the same time, I didn't <laughs> blow it in a bad way. I had fun with it. I made sure everybody around me had fun with it. And at the same time, I know yeah, it exactly can always that. be made. That's, yeah, you know that's how I, mean? I feel. Yep. So follow your bliss. That's the classic Joseph Campbell advice. And that's also yep. Tony Hawk's advice to follow your bliss. That's a beautiful thing. Sure. So thank you so much for being the first guest ever on the yes. Ghetto Bird Show, yes. by the way. I mean, we, I can only go down from here now. Thank you very much. You know what I mean? I, I don't yeah, mind. Man, I take that challenge. No, that was fun. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. All right, well, thank you, brother. And anything you need, you know, I always have my number. And I, I just look forward to keep following behind you, brother. Also, one, one last thing. You, uh, you want to know what the next thing that broke the internet? Your 360 flipped a fakey. For oh, sure. Yo, for thank sure. you. Thank you yeah. for that. Yeah, because I, I swear I woke up to, like, everyone calling me. And it was like, they like, you still yeah. skateboard? I was like, what do you mean? That was it. That, that one just was like... <sighs> Tony, were they still, were, were your peer group, were people calling you, were they surprised? Because like those of us who skate with him, we know we can do that anytime. So it's so funny that I've been like, when are you going to show the world? And he waited a long time to show the world. I would say that I, more, more the video game crowd was surprised. But, but the people close to me, like they know, they know, they know Cream can skate. They know he could just, you know, even if he took a break, he could just go do that. So they weren't surprised. They were just stoked that you were doing it. You know what I mean? That you were on camera doing it. No, well, I thank you because Tony, you had my phone blowing up, and I got everyone saying I came <laughs> out of retirement to like <laughs> just the craziest thing. And I'm just they like, you really know Tony Hawk because he posted you. And I'm like, I've been in all his games. I've been following behind him, but. <laughs> but thank you, brother. Thank you again. And thank you for everything that you've done for the industry, just as a band. Brother. Thanks, Kareem. It was an honor. Blessings. Awesome. All right. Blessings. Thank you. I'll All see right, you guys. Man.